Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Lexi. Today, I am not making a cooking video for you. I'm actually going to attempt to induce my own labor. And I know this sounds a little bit drastic. Some people will probably be a little upset with me, but um, just so you know, I'm 38 weeks pregnant, 38 and I think three or four days. Along with this, at my 35 week ultrasound, Raven was seven and a half pounds already. So at that rate, she's probably almost 10 pounds and I feel every single pound of it. I am so tired all the time. I'm absolutely miserable, I'm uncomfortable. So what I'm going to do is I'm making what's called a midwife's brew. And I'll show you guys the recipe. Apparently it has a 85% effectiveness rate within inducing labor in 24 hours. I didn't find any actual um, articles I would consider credible supporting that. It's mostly just like memes, excuse me, memes. Sorry, I have a heartburn too. That's another reason. Uh, memes and those little, like the recipe, it would say 85% effective, but there isn't any actual studies supporting it. I'm a scientist, so those are important for me to actually believe things, but I'm gonna give it a try. So this recipe only requires four ingredients. Uh, the first is this lemon verbena tea. My Meyer and Walmart and Health Hut did not have it. My poor mom went everywhere looking for it for me. Um, but I did some Googling and apparently it's not super important in the recipe. The most important ingredient is this castor oil that is supposedly what induces the contractions. But the uh, a lot of people were saying that lemon ginger tea was a good substitute, so that's what I opted for. It, the recipe calls for eight ounces of this tea. The next ingredient, the nectar, it's supposed to be apricot nectar. Same story, it's not super important. It's actually just used to mask the taste of the other two ingredients. So I substituted with strawberry nectar because none of the places had apricot nectar. I did have castor oil, which is the most important ingredient. It's supposedly is supposed to induce contractions. Again, I did not find any scientific studies supporting that it induces contractions. The only thing that I've found in scientific studies is that it, it um, makes you poop. So worse comes worse. I'm gonna poop a lot today. It'll be cool. Uh, and then the last ingredient was almond butter, which we were able to find. Not entirely sure on what the almond butter is supposed to do. I'm assuming it's gonna aid with the castor oil just because it has a similar consistency. So um, the recipe calls for two tablespoons castor oil, mm -hmm. two, tablespo two tablespoons of the almond butter, 10 ounces of the nectar and eight ounces of the tea. So they recommend that you blend all of this up and they say it's best served over ice. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, I got my tea brew in here. I'll give you a look. It smells actually so good. Um, I'm just gonna brew this, I don't know, as long as tea takes to brew. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm being really skeptical. I'm being, I keep saying supposedly a lot. I'm. I'm just, I don't believe it's going to work, especially because I just haven't seen any research behind it. I'm pretty, uh, as a scientist or somebody that studies science, I've been taught over years and years of school that you should always be skeptical of things that don't have credible research behind it. So that's just how I am. Sorry if I'm <laughs> being a buzzkill, but I pray that it works because I'm ready. I am ready to go to the hospital. I promise y'all that I am so ready. So I'm going to make this concoction. Then I'm going to attempt to uh, clean up the house. I've I've been told that if you are start nesting, that it could be a sign that you're going to go into labor soon. Again, no research behind that either. <laughs> but I've definitely been nesting. I actually shout out to Tyler guys, first of all. He cleaned our entire apartment today while I was gone. And it was, I was so impressed when I walked in the house. I was like, wow, this person really loves me. But uh, I'm going to actually sweep and mop the floors and disinfect all of our surfaces. I just, 
I need to do it. It's just like something inside of me telling me I need to do it. It's called nesting. And yeah, I hope that these two things together make me go into labor today, guys. I'm ready. Okay, so we got 10 ounces of our nectar here I'm going to add. This nectar smells really good. I kind of want to taste test it. <laughs> oh, this is two tablespoons of castor oil here. Yum. Now I've got eight ounces of our lemon ginger tea. And two tablespoons of almond butter. All right, come on now. Ooh, that actually came out <laughs> pretty nicely. And I am gonna blend this up and then I'm gonna serve it over ice. I'll show you guys what that looks like. Yum! All right, so I got my cool Harry Potter tumbler. Shout out to Tyler for getting that for me. Guys, I've been so mean to him. <laughs> I have been so grouchy and mean. I'm blaming it on the pregnancy right now. It probably isn't just the pregnancy, but um, he got me this tumbler. He cleaned the house. He's just so nice. So lucky to have him. But anyways, it's full of ice. I'm going to, I don't think this is all going to fit in there. Uh, okay. Like, Two thirds of it probably fit in there. So you're supposed to drink this within 30 minutes. So my time right now, let's look at the time. It's 621. So by 651, I need to have all of this drink and they say to do it on an empty stomach. I ate like two hours ago. That's empty enough for me. <laughs> so down the hatch, I'll let you guys know how it tastes. So, it doesn't taste bad, you guys. Um, I read a lot of things saying that it tasted horrible and it was so difficult to drink, blah, blah, blah. It's really not bad at all. Um, I did use strawberry nectar instead. Maybe that's the trick, but it's actually pretty decent. You can, I mean, the texture is a little weird because of the oil, but it's not bad. It is now 625, so it's been four minutes, and I already finished the first um, cup full. I'm now on the second cup full. Pretty positive I'm going to finish this in 30 minutes. Wasn't that hard for me. So I'm going to continue drinking this. I'm just chilling at the table. And my goal after I drink this is to check in with you every three hours. Uh, they say that you're supposed to go into labor within 24 hours. So let's see if it works. Let's see what happens. All right. It is now 637 and I have finished my entire drink. Um, did get a little burpy. I will say that. But I don't think I think finishing it in 30 minutes is pretty reasonable. Um, just for reference, before I start this video, I have not been experiencing any contractions, nothing insinuating that I might be going to labor soon. I'll say in the past week, I've had one Braxton Hicks, whatever it's called, contraction. Um, it was like maybe 10, 15 seconds. <laughs> it wasn't even like for real. So, um, if this does induce labor... It'll be strictly from this, and I'm going to do some bouncing. I think you can see my little yoga ball over there. I'm going to do some bouncing on my ball. Um, I've got a Harry Potter marathon going on that I'm going to get back to. I'm going to do some homework, clean, um, and I'm going to check back with you every three hours or so. Maybe I'll show you my nursery. Maybe I'll show you guys our hospital go bags or something. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where it brings us. So yeah. All right. So it's nine o'clock at night. I'm just going to go on the hour um, for the every three hours. Absolutely nothing has happened. Um, I've had some grumblies in my tummy, I guess. Uh, 
haven't had to poop or anything, but so far, nothing. Hey guys, so it's been another three hours, it's now midnight, <sighs> and it's definitely doing something to my body. Um, I had some, some pretty bad diarrhea, sorry, TMI, whatever, but that was pretty painful, and that was at like 11. Um, my stomach definitely is a little upset. It might be my fault a little bit because I also ate because I would just got so hungry I couldn't, um, I know it says to take this on an empty stomach or whatever, but there's no way that I can go without eating for 24 hours. So I had something to eat and probably 10 minutes after I ate, um, I had diarrhea and my stomach hurts, but I think that I've had two contractions. I They weren't strong at all. But it was like my whole midsection cramped up a little bit. And they were 15 minutes apart. So I'll keep you updated. Hey guys, I'm about to take a nap for about three hours. I'll check back in with you to let you know how everything's going. Uh... Tyler's got to work in the morning, so he's going to bed. But hopefully this progresses a little bit more. See ya. Hey guys, it's 3 a.m. Um, nothing happened that uh, was significant. I was I slept like a baby. So if nothing happens this next cycle, this next three hours, I'm gonna just continue to sleep because I'm really tired y'all I had to throw our laundry in the dryer so I didn't mind getting up this time but I don't think I'm gonna be able to get up the next three hours unless something happens so <laughs> I'll keep updating you good morning it is now 9 a.m. Um, I, t I didn't have any contractions between 3 a.m. and now, unless I was sleeping really hard. <laughs> I don't know, but I, I'm giving this whole thing 24 hours, but I don't think it's really working, so I'll keep you updated every three hours still. Hey guys, I'm back. Um, it's like 12.30 now. I forgot to check in at first after three hours. Um, Tyler and I went on like a two mile walk downtown. So that was nice. And then we got some lunch. Um, I'm going to show you Raven's room, her nursery, just cause why not? It's a work in progress right now. It's not all the way done. Um, well actually it's almost done. The last thing that we need is her area rug and my mom is bringing that over today. So after that, it'll be all done. So I'll show you once the rug's here too. But I, I'm gonna just kind of show you how we got it set up so far. Okay, so this is when we first walk in. This is a pile of stuff that we have not found a home for yet. Um, some of it will just be naturally, you know, that's my diaper bag, so it'll probably just be hanging up somewhere. Um, that's my nursing pillow. The black and gray one is my nursing pillow. So that's gonna be uh, probably near my bed or near the chair or something. These are all miscellaneous items that I need to find a home for. Um, that's my breast pump so that I'll find a place naturally. My breast pump bags and some bottles. This is her high chair, the baby trend. Um, I don't really know where we're gonna store that until she needs it. Um, Maybe I can find a way to get it in her closet, but you'll see why it's not in her closet. Um, so yeah, that is our bassinet, the safety first one. We have to put that together. We're going to have that next to our bed. That's her toy box. We could assemble it and just have it up in here, but she's not going to use it for a little bit. So I just feel like it would be kind of, kind of pointless, but it would be kind of a nice little area for storage so maybe I will as assemble it just to have it for storage and then that's our diaper genie we need to assemble that too so maybe there's more that I need to do in here than I thought but if she comes we got the necessities you know so 
This is her crib. My Aunt Tanya got it for us. It's so perfect. I love it so much. And this is her little comforter set that Granny Yvonne got her. It's got unicorns on it. Some little stuffed animals in here. Obviously, when she's here, I'll take them out when she's sleeping to be safe. We've got a couple handmade blankets here. This one's from Grandma Sue, my pastor's mom. And then this one underneath it is actually from one of Tyler's customers. Um, he works for Xfinity and Comcast, whatever. Um, but they actually had it knitted and gave it to him um, for our baby. So this is the artwork we have so far. I'm obsessed. I painted that my this raven uh, canvas myself and I was so proud of myself. <laughs> These other ones my mom got me from, what's that place called? I'm drawing a blank. Oh, I'll let you know when I think about it. But then Granny Yvonne got us that. Aunt Jenny got us the little dream catcher. And then we got to put up her humidifier. And then T.T. Taylor got Raven these, um, these flowers. Where do you guys think I should put them? Because they're so cute and they go with her nursery, but I just can't figure out where I want to hang them up. So that's something that I'm also going to do. Um, this is her little dresser. So cute. I have it pretty much full. <laughs> these are all her little accessories and booties, socks. Um, this is her pants just pants y'all she's got so many clothes and this is just a uh, zero to six months that i got in here i have more that i have up in the closet that's like six to 12 months that i have kind of stored because i didn't have a lot of room for them um this is more miscellaneous items we got socks washcloths her there's a couple swaddling excuse me a couple swaddling blankets and some burp rags and bibs and pacifiers and then these are the little outlet plugs that we're going to put in and then these are just her zero to six months onesies that we got down here there's more in the closet that are hanging up but those are the majority of them then we're going to go back over here i've got a little diaper area um these are all ones so I got her ones stocked in, well, we got more ones in the closet, but these are what I have so far in here. Um, her newborn diapers, we only have two packs of them, and that's probably a good thing because kind of sounds like she's already <laughs> dang near outgrown them so far because, like I said, she was already seven and a half pounds at 35 weeks. So uh, this is her jammy drawer. We've got newborn to six months in here. Um, she didn't, the craziest thing guys, she didn't have any pajamas like a week ago. And I, when I had people tell me, I was like, oh yeah, she doesn't have any pajamas. That's one thing that we still need. And then I got so much love from so many people sending me pajamas for her. And now she has hella pajamas. So we are set on that. Now, oh, sorry. I'm going too fast. Go back so you can see. Okay. So we explored her crib area, her dresser, these miscellaneous items I gotta find a home for. Oh, that's her little bath. She's got a little bath um, thingy. I don't know what it's called. We're coming over here. That is my mom's. She's taken that with her because it's a little bassinet. I had it here for when I was babysitting baby Ivy, but we do not really have a need for it or room for it. So it's going to grandma's and that's her little hamper that we're gonna use to put her clothes in. So this is my favorite part, her closet. Look at it. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's got so much stuff, guys. Up top is like everything six to 12 months that I couldn't fit. We've got a couple more blankets up there. Um, we've got a Winnie the Pooh blanket that my grandma got us. And then that other hand knitted one is from my mom. She got it at a craft show. And underneath that is a little towel that's got a little hood on it, but it's pretty big. So we're not gonna use that till she's older, but still super cute. And then I have this closet organized 
so far based on age. So down here is her newborn stuff. Um, starting right here is zero to three month old stuff. And then it goes into three to six. Then we've got a bunch of six month, then nine month. And then we got a couple 12 month and 2T stuff. Um, so yeah, that's at least her clothes. She's got hung up. She's still got, you know, she's got all these clothes in her drawers too. Um, we've got our little diaper stash that we haven't bought a single thing of diapers. These are all given to us by um, other people. So thank you so much to everybody that gave us diapers. Honestly, it's been so comforting to not have to buy any, at least for a long time. She's got those two packs of newborns on the bottom there. And then she's got ones and twos. I think she has like one pack of threes, maybe. Not a lot. So she doesn't have any threes really, but that's fine. We haven't had a baby shower yet and we're still planning on maybe having one. So I'll just tell everybody, reason up. These are all wipes. These two stacks are all wipes. So we are pretty set on wipes. I'm really happy about it. Shout out to my Aunt Lisa for that, for sure. She sent us so many wipes. Um, we've got... This is that... one. This gray thing is from Grandma Tina, Tyler's mom. Um, it's like those, like, cotton wraps that you use to, like, wear your baby like a backpack on your front. Um, I don't know what it's called. But super cute. Tyler really, really wanted that. That's, like, his most exciting thing is he wants to um, wear Raven <laughs> like a backpack, he said. Um, this is a little baby vac for her nose in case she gets a cold. And then uh, this is a little outfit set. I didn't quite know where to put it, so I just put it in her closet. Super cute. It's from Disney World, a small world. Um, this is the month by month little countdown thing. I got a couple of boxes of swaddle blankets, one from Aunt Jenny, one from my Aunt Lori. Um, and then, let's see, we got some crib sheets up there. Uh, this is a little Christmas set from Tammy. Thank you so much, Tammy. It's for her first Christmas. I'm not going to take it down because then I got to put it back up. <laughs> Got to put it back up there. Um, and she's also got up there like a little safety kit. It has a, um, it's the American Red Cross one. I'm not taking that out either, but in case we need it, she's got packs of bibs up there. And then we're going to come back down here. Oh, look at this little stool my mom got us. It's so cute. I'm going to actually sit on that to show you, to show you everything down here. Okay. So... We got some laundry detergent and the little scent crystals sent to us. Super nice. They smell so good. We've had a we've had a few people give us some clothes, um, like hand me downs, and we, um, I used that to wash it already, and it made them smell so good. So I'm excited. Um, we have a bouncer and a swing in here. So once she gets here and we get all this, we get this stuff out, I think I'll have more room in the closet to put like her high chair in and some of these miscellaneous items that are over in the corner that I don't have room for at the moment. Uh, this little happy stash here is all of her shoes. Oh my gosh, guys. I think I counted. I think she has 22 pairs of shoes and she's a baby. Like... <laughs> So she's got, she is hooked on the shoes. Um, this little play mat is from TT Taylor too. Thank you. Um, it used to be Tayden's, but uh, now it's Raven's. Let's, okay, this is our, we got our baby monitors here that we'll be setting up when she gets here. And what's this thing down here? I can't even see it. Oh, a bottle warmer. I've got a bottle warmer down there that we'll be setting up. And then this little pack here is some miscellaneous items that I'm going to go through and hang up as well. It also has a bunch of toys on the bottom. Some of them are for like when she's a little bit older. Some of them are baby toys that I can hook up on this play mat. 
So I'll be doing that when she gets here too. Wow, guys, I thought I had a lot done, but I guess I don't <laughs> because I have, I've been saying a lot of things that I need to do. So yeah, but that is her closet. And then last but not least, we have our go bags over here packed. That's a diaper bag, has Raven's first outfits. I'll open it up and show it to you in a minute. But that's what we have for her. We have a huge go bag. This is my old rugby bag because we found out that um, once, because of COVID-19, once Tyler and I get to the hospital, neither of us can leave. Like he can't leave at all. Otherwise he can't come back. And we'll probably be there for at least two days, maybe three if I'm getting induced, which I plan to be. Um, so we have three days worth of stuff for Tyler and I in here. And then that minor bag is snacks because I was really concerned about the food situation, if you know me. <laughs> and then we have, this is from uh, Jen, Jen Smith. Thank you so much. She sent us a little baby blanket and it's so soft. And I decided that this is the one that we're gonna like have on her when we bring her home, like in her car seat. So yeah. So it's already two o'clock. So might as well just do another update with you real quick. Um, I haven't had any contractions like since I think my last one was at like maybe like one in the morning. I felt one. But since then, I haven't had anything, so I'm not super sure that this is working. Um, the only thing I had was, I told you when I had diarrhea, that was like the only event that I've had. But I did have like a couple, like I swear they were contractions because I hadn't felt anything like the, like that before. And they were, so I would say like four I've had like four contractions total, um, but I'm not thinking it's inducing labor. Granted, I'm not, I was kind of active. I organized Raven's Nursery. I was up on my feet. I've been bouncing on my ball. I went on a two mile walk, um, still trying to kind of help labor along. It hasn't really, nothing's really working. So I have a feeling it's just going to be when Raven wants to come, she will until I get induced. So lame but um one thing I do want to answer I've had a bunch of people ask me this uh if I have gestational diabetes because <laughs> she's so big I don't I got tested twice um once late I think it was either late in my first trimester or early in my second trimester I got tested it was negative uh my Glucose levels were fine. Same thing with the second test that I took. I think it was early in my third trimester. So I don't have gestational diabetes. She um, was in the 60th percentile when she when I did my like series of 20. I'd had to take like three ultrasounds for 20 weeks because she's super wiggly and they couldn't find a few structures so it took three times for them to find everything that they were looking for but she's perfectly healthy has everything that she needs but um she was yeah she's so she's a little bit big she's in the 60th percentile and then all of a sudden at my 35 week ultrasound she's in the 97th percentile for weight and height so she's just like a big baby now so she was seven and a half pounds at 35 weeks so that's full grown at 35 weeks and they say that your baby increases in weight a half a pound to a pound every week from then on so by now she could be anywhere from nine to ten pounds already so that's the biggest reason why I was trying to induce labor guys because I'm like I really want to deliver vaginally and I'm scared she's gonna get way too big so, um, but I have an appointment in a couple of days with my doctor. They might choose to induce her early, earlier than they were originally going to. So we'll see. I'll let you know. But yeah, that's my update. Still nothing really going on as far as contractions or labor goes. So kind of bummed. <laughs>